Your Excellency Justin, it's a pleasure to welcome you uh, to this session. And uh, uh, Brian also, thank you for joining us. Uh, John and Barbara, uh, it is going to be a great session. I'm glad that, that we are all here at this uh, uh, Regional Innovation Forum. The Regional Innovation Forum is, is part of the Global Innovation Forum. Uh, we've been uh, uh, having this exercise all week, but today is purely dedicated uh, to Africa. So I thank you for being uh, part of this. The Africa Innovation Forum is the second uh, now, and I want to particularly uh, thank the Republic of Congo through uh, you, Minister uh, Ibombo, for having hosted uh, the first uh, regional initiative, uh, Re um, regional innovation forum uh, last year, uh, 2019. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has thrown a spanner in the works and really upset uh, most of our livelihoods and others still at risk because in most of the world, uh, the pandemic is still alive. But particularly for us, we've been hit particularly hard in the informal sector, where uh, probably 50 to 75 percent of uh, the employment in the in the continent is. So everybody, uh, our governments, our uh, international organizations, the UN organizations have been working very hard to try and mitigate uh, this, uh, this pandemic. However, uh, also our innovators, our young people have been working very hard uh, in order to uh, try to uh, normalize or mitigate the pandemic. And these uh, have included uh, the development of systems uh, that are uh, applications that can be used for various things. They have been uh, used especially in uh, as online applications for mobile uh, for mobile phones where people have been able to uh, order services including even even food orders and medicines have been delivered uh, ordered from pharmacies and delivered uh, uh, by uh, this, this, these people. <clears throat> so they've been part of a, a budding uh, ICT uh, innovation ecosystem that is budding in Africa. We've um, been trying in ITU to uh, facilitate and anchor uh, these uh, young people uh, who have, uh, through their uh, support of their countries, been able to or been trying to uh, work within uh, an ecosystem. And this has to be, or we've been advocating for it to be uh, an uh, all on board, really, ecosystem because you can't have an innovation system just in the ICT sector or an innovation system in the agricultural sector. It has to be an all sector, all government innovation uh, ecosystem. And I think uh, a number of countries have endeavored to do this. We have anchored our, our work uh, in the African Union Digital Transformation Strategy, uh, whose overall objective is to harness uh, digital technologies and innovation to transform Africa's societies and economies, to promote Africa's integration, generate inclusive economic growth, stimulate job creation, erase the digital divide, and eradicate poverty to secure the benefits of digital revolution 
for the social economic development. These strategies that I have just, uh, whose objective I just quoted is built on five foundational pillars, enabling environment, policy and regulation, digital infrastructure, digital skills and human capacity, and digital innovation and entrepreneurship. So you can see uh, how important and how, uh, how fundamental uh, digital innovation and entrepreneurship is. So this forum aims to engage us in a learning journey really to gain insights on how to build regional and national capacities uh, from ecosystem builders, innovators and champions who will identify the region's challenges and opportunities. It will further highlight uh, good working practices and collaboration efforts between all of the digital innovation ecosystem stakeholders. And we will hear power stories from the winners of the ITU Innovation Challenge. The forum is also well thought out and in line with the ITU Africa Regional Initiative One, which is building digital economies and fostering innovation in Africa. It will promote practices to build uh, more innovative ICT-based innovation ecosystems contributing to social economic development. By unlocking digital ecosystems potential, the forum aims to share how to overcome the digital innovation divide and accelerate digital transformation. Working with ITU, some of our member states, South Africa, Rwanda, Kenya, already drafted their digital innovation profiles and under drafting are Niger and Mali. I strongly encourage everyone to start this very exciting innovation journey towards digital innovation ecosystem. And I want to reiterate that ITU stands ready to work with you in this endeavor. So it is now my privilege to welcome the, the, the panelists um, that, uh, that I mentioned earlier. We have, um, we have His Excellency uh, Leon Giste Ibombo, uh, who is the uh, Minister of Digital Economy in uh, the Republic of Congo. And I, I will go, uh, I will go panelist by panelist. So, uh, Your Excellency, what are some of the ICT ecosystem development initiatives in the Republic of Congo that are fostering entrepreneurship activities and fueling ICT innovation? And how are decision makers uh, fostering this partnership? You have Minister, eight minutes. Thank you. Your Excellency. Merci beaucoup. Monsieur le directeur régional des télécommunications, Madame la représentante du Front des Nations, Monsieur le secrétaire général de l'UNIAF, Monsieur le directeur régional de l'innovation de Orange, chers panélistes et participants, je voudrais tout d'abord m'acquitter du devoir de remercier les organisations et tout particulièrement l'Union internationale des télécommunications, pour nous avoir fait l'honneur de prendre la parole au présent atelier de haut niveau, à travers les questions pertinentes en discussion, telles la collaboration des priorités régionales en matière d'innovation, d'entrepreneuriat, de développement des écosystèmes. Je vois dans la tenue de cet atelier l'engagement des intelligences partagées à construire des économies numériques afin de résoudre les problèmes de développement auxquels l'Afrique subsaharienne est singulièrement confrontée. Tel le manque d'accès à l'inclusion financière, 
à l'éducation, à l'énergie ou encore à l'eau potable. Mesdames et Messieurs, fort de l'engagement du Président de la République, Son Excellence M. Denis Sassou d'inscrire le développement de l'économie numérique au cœur de son pacte social, je suis convaincu, comme vous, que le numérique est de notre temps porteur de nombreux défis et d'heureuses opportunités au bénéfice vrai pour nos populations. C'est pourquoi il nous faut penser, définir ensemble des politiques pour favoriser les écosystèmes d'innovation numérique et la transformation numérique. Le rôle que joue la collaboration et les partenaires régionaux, leur importance pour l'intégration d'un écosystème compétitif à l'ère de la COVID-19, les principaux défis et opportunités auxquels nos pays sont confrontés et les politiques nationales en la matière. Il revient en premier lieu à l'État de créer les conditions nécessaires à l'essor du développement durable, ce, en traitant notamment des questions de stratégie économique, d'encadrement juridique, d'accompagnement des inventeurs, des innovateurs. Mesdames et messieurs, l'innovation, lorsqu'elle est bien accompagnée, peut agir comme un catalyseur et un puissant accélérateur pour l'atteinte des objectifs de développement durable. Elle joue un rôle essentiel en apportant des solutions durables, inclusives et adaptées au contexte de nos pays, permettant ainsi à ces dernières, c'est-à-dire les populations, d'accéder aux besoins et aux services fondamentaux tels que l'énergie, l'éducation ou la santé. C'est dans cette optique que la République a adopté un plan national de développement qui reflète les objectifs de développement durable des Nations unies. C'est aussi dans ce contexte que le gouvernement a élaboré la stratégie Vision Congo Digital 2025 qui s'articule autour de trois piliers qui sont le e-gouv, le e-citoyen et le e-business. La politique de l'innovation numérique dans mon pays repose d'abord sur les infrastructures et en particulier sur les autoroutes de l'information. C'est ainsi que sont mises en œuvre successivement les projets de couverture nationale en télécommunication, le projet West African Cab System et le projet Central African Backbone. Une fois que ces autoroutes sont mises en place, le gouvernement congolais a enrichi sa législation à travers la promulgation des lois portant lutte contre la cybercriminalité, contre, relative à la cybersécurité, à la protection des données à caractère personnel, à la, la loi relative aux transactions électroniques. Et même récemment encore, mon pays, le Congo, a ratifié la convention de Malabo, dite de l'Union africaine sur la cybersécurité et la protection des données à caractère personnel. Et nous sommes d'ores et déjà en train de travailler avec... Euh, nos partenaires de l'Union européenne pour ratifier la convention de Budapest. C'est tout cet arsenal juridique qui devrait permettre de créer des conditions favorables et le cadre législatif nécessaire pour créer la conscience numérique, qui est la condition nécessaire pour garantir le développement de l'innovation dans nos pays. Au rang des initiatives régionales, le free roaming entre le Congo et le Gabon est désormais disponible depuis le 1er janvier 2020. Et c'est aussi ici l'occasion et le lieu de rappeler l'importance de l'initiative Smart Africa, née de la volonté des chefs d'État de l'Union africaine, qui a permis d'atteindre ce résultat qui profite directement à nos populations. La question d'accompagnement des inventeurs, des innovateurs, euh, a créé a, prise en, a été prise en compte à travers une structure dans mon pays, c'est la Direction générale du développement de l'économie numérique qui est dédiée à accompagner justement les jeunes pour faire en sorte que ces jeunes puissent s'insérer dans ce secteur dynamique. Mais aussi, mon département est en train de porter un avant-projet de loi portant le statut des start-up en République du Congo, ici encore pour booster le secteur de l'économie numérique. Mesdames et Messieurs, pour rappel, euh, notre pays, en partenariat avec le Bureau régional de l'Union internationale des télécommunications, avait organisé en octobre 2019 un atelier régional sur la réduction de la fracture numérique dont l'objectif visait à renforcer les capacités et les compétences régionales et nationales en matière de développement d'écosystèmes numériques et surtout de l'innovation. 
et à cette occasion le prix Denis Sassou Nguesso pour l'innovation numérique euh, qui a été lancé pour la première fois euh, donc participe à cette volonté affichée à inciter les jeunes à s'insérer au développement de l'économie numérique. Malgré l'initiative et la créativité, les innovateurs restent confrontés, on doit l'avouer, à quelques défis majeurs, tels que le faible niveau de pénétration de l'Internet et de la compétence numérique. Nos infrastructures critiquent nos politiques attractives d'incitation à insérer le développement de l'économie numérique et la stabilité politique de notre pays sont en gage pour favoriser les écosystèmes d'innovation numérique et la transformation numérique. Notre ambition pour les prochaines années, nous espérons avec l'appui de l'UIT, c'est que l'édition Denis Sassou Nguesso pour l'innovation numérique, c'est de faire de cette activité, une, de cette compétition, on va dire, des jeunes, une activité sous-régionale et pourquoi pas régionale de l'innovation numérique euh, afin de susciter l'émulation, mais aussi la créativité. Et au moment où nous nous, nous réunissons ici, euh, il y a 40 jeunes Congolais euh, qui sont en train de concourir dans le cadre du hackathon lancé par le programme des Nations Unies, euh, le programme des Nations Unies pour le développement du Congo, au Congo, sous le thème euh, Act for COVID-19. Donc, une compétition euh, destinée aux innovateurs désireux d'apporter des solutions aux défis créés par la pandémie de la COVID-19, d'identifier des solutions de gestion et de crise et de relèvement socio-économique face à cette pandémie. Ces challenges sont autant d'espaces de formation, d'information, mais aussi de dynamisation de l'écosystème du numérique dans notre pays. Et dans la même perspective, pour, avant de terminer, euh, de l'innovation et de la lutte contre la COVID-19, le Congo, en partenariat avec la Commission des Nations Unies pour l'Afrique, la CEA, a développé la plateforme africaine de communication et d'information, ACIP, en sigle, euh, qui servira de modèle dans d'autres pays. Et c'est le président de la République, son Excellence, M. Denis Sassou Nguesso, justement, qui avait lancé les travaux de cette plateforme. Et même très bientôt, euh, à, toujours avec le concours de la CEA, le Congo va se doter d'un centre d'excellence d'intelligence artificielle à l'université Denis Sassou Nguesso de Kintele, et cela grâce aux fruits de cette collaboration fructueuse entre la CEA et notre pays. Et enfin, pour terminer mon propos, je souhaite que ce forum nous apporte les outils nécessaires pour nous aider à accélérer plus encore la transformation digitale de nos États par la promotion de l'innovation et de l'entrepreneuriat. Merci pour votre attention. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. These are indeed very important, very credible uh, initiatives that uh, that you have embarked on. Uh, I, I wouldn't be able to rank them uh, in terms of importance. So I'm not going to try. But it is, it is very important that uh, not only is your country initiating national programs, it is also uh, working with neighboring countries. I note the initiative with, with Gabon. I note the initiative uh, that I actually, uh, we are also part of with, uh, with the UNEC. It's a very, very important platform. But most importantly, I note the initiative that is launched by uh, His Excellency Denis Asungweso, uh, and promise you that uh, I will also follow up with you uh, to see uh, how uh, how ITU can can engage and uh, and uh, work with you in uh, accompany you in this in these initiatives. Indeed, uh, creating an innovation ecosystem uh, as a framework for. Uh, the initiatives to work is, is very important. So once again, uh, Minister Juste, thank you very much. Uh, let me turn to uh, Ms. Uh, Lorencio, uh, UNFPA representative in, uh, in Benin, uh, to share with us. Barbara, could you please share with us 
the ongoing experience of uh, UNFPA in, in Bene uh, and the, how relevant, uh, what relevant uh, partnerships with UN agencies and other innovation stakeholders uh, for sustainable solutions uh, for the youth you have created. Barbara, Thank please. you. Thank you very much, Mr. Director. Yeah. His Excellencies, Mr. Minister, Secretary General, Director, uh, my, my best wishes from Benin. Uh, so I'm Barbara Lorenzo, the UNFPA representative in the country. Uh, UNFPA is one of the UN agencies, one of the members of the UN family, and we are really working on reproductive health, and especially women's and girls' uh, health and rights. So the, the reason why I'm here today is to share the concrete experience of Benin. And, and I am actually only one voice among a, a network of partners. And we were very lucky because at the opening of, of this forum, uh, we all heard uh, Mrs. Claude Borna, who is the executive director of Seme City, the city of innovation of Benin. So my voice is only one voice among a, a, a large uh, network of partners and uh, to share the amazing experience that we went through this COVID pandemic. Uh, somehow the pandemic is, is a challenge but I, and, and the certainly a, a scary moment in history, but it also created incredible opportunities and new linkages. And, and I think this is something that we heard uh, along this forum, I, I read the, the statements, the takeaways of the ministerial segment of, of this forum. It, it's obviously something that everybody agrees upon, that the, the COVID pandemic accelerated uh, the introduction of innovation and digital solutions in our landscapes. Um, practically what I wanted, the experience that I wanted to share and that Claude Bona touched upon at the beginning of the week is what happened with us, we are a health agency, a UN health agency. And in March, we were all preparing as the rest of the world, to what can we do in, in anticipation to this epidemic or pandemic that was arriving to the African continent. So we linked with the city of innovation and, and uh, as UNFPA, but soon enough, we had other partners starting to also co-create with the city of innovation with UNFPA, with start, local startups, and, and soon enough, other partners got involved, UNICEF and private partners. So within a month or so, uh, a network was established with over 100 stakeholders from very local startups, small startups, to UN agencies, to the government, involving, of course, the Ministry of Health too. And this enabled to really organize the response around four areas of work. And it really enabled to bring innovation and digital solutions, rapid innovation and digital solutions to, to, to the COVID response in Benin. So this experience is really amazing. It, it enabled us to, to address a number of bottlenecks. And I'm just gonna briefly mention them without going in details. But for example, how at this time of, of, of the year, we were at wondering how to get protection equipment for health workers while most of the, the travels were blocked around the world. So it enabled us to find solution to actually have a local production of masks and other protective equipments. It also enabled us to solve other issues such as the information ecosystem, in, uh, information structure, um, the, the, data, the structure of the data that are being collected and the tools that needed to be with some interoperability in the data collections of all, all levels of information and tracking of cases. So it's just to say that really it helped. It helped accelerate solutions and develop local practical solutions that really were in response to, to the situation. Two observations, very briefly, and I'm finished, is first for me, the experience was, is very, really relevant because it, it did uh, put some partners together that are used to work together, the government, the UN agencies, big partners, they kind of 
used to work together. But this time it really linked us with local startups. And what was even more interesting for us, because we were used to work to those, with those local startups, but we even reached local startups that were across the country, in the very north of the country, very south of the country, because young people were so talented and, and they wanted to participate. So they were bringing their own solutions. And with the virtual world, they could share their solutions. So that's one point. And the second and, and final point is I was also very struck by the, the connections between the young people between countries in the region, meaning the, the young people in Benin were in touch with the young people in Ghana or in Nigeria or in Burkina Faso. And they were all connecting through this platform, but through other mechanisms that we have in place to, to, to put them in connection. And I think this is really something that we, we have to be very proud of them and we have to nurture for the years to come. So this is my contribution, Mr. Director. Thank you very much, Barbara. I, um, it's, it's, it's very difficult usually to turn, uh, to, to turn the COVID-19 impact into, into a kind of positive impact. But what you have mentioned uh, is, is really a, a positive impact. First of all, uh, the, the value in the region's young people working together, which was the which, you are, which was your concluding point, uh, is very important because uh, Africa is going to only be uh, viable as one Africa and bringing our young people together, that, that is the key, the, the key to the innovation. Uh, but also your other point about uh, the, 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 usual, um, the, the usual partners now going beyond and working with uh, with uh, uh, startups and, and young people, that is something that we can learn from you because the co-creation that you are talking about, uh, I'm sure they brought a lot of ideas, you brought a lot of ideas and the co-created solutions were good, good for, for Bene. I, I know that Bene is very uh, dynamic. I work uh, closely with uh, High Excellency Larry. And, and so congratulations and thank you. So uh, I would now like to uh, call on, uh, I would now like to call on uh, the Secretary General of ATU, my friend, John Omo, uh, to please, uh, can you tell us what key initiatives AT ATU has taken to promote collaboration and partnership for a competitive digital ecosystem development in the region. I, I need to mention here for those that don't know that uh, ATU is our very, very close partner, very close partner and regional organization of the ITU. John, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew, for the intro and uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I sincerely want to recognize uh, the honorable minister from the from Congo uh, madame uh, Barbara Brian uh, fellow panelists thank you very much for those that have spoken ahead of me I, I want to associate with the sentiments that I already expressed as you have said uh, the ATU is a regional telecommunications organization we work closely with the ITU and indeed other uh, uh, communications organizations from other ITU uh, regions. We are established as a, uh, an, uh, an organ of the African Union. And so we work uh, principally in the field of, of ICT. Now, when you talk of innovation, uh, I think the question that begs uh, to be answered is why is Africa where it is? and what can Africa do differently in order to ensure that we not only catch up, but that the digital revolution that is creating so, so many services do not leave us behind. And I see, I see this in uh, three ways. One is infrastructure. And secondly is uh, skills gap in terms of capacity building. And, and the last one is uh, uh, 
uh, well, perhaps for institutions that are that generate in necessary ideas for handholding, for exposure, and and for internship opportunities. And so, let me start uh, from an infrastructural point of view. Uh, innovation largely has gone online. Uh, you know, the hubs that we have established, whether in Egypt, whether in Congo, whether in Rwanda, or wherever, require that our young people, uh, very innovative and creative minds, network and, and look at opportunities that exist in other places and build on success stories from other innovators in order to create Africa's, uh, African solutions to African problems. So we as ATU have been working on, on the realm of infrastructure, both, both at a policy and regulatory level to ensure that uh, our policies, our, our regulatory uh, frameworks are aligned to each other for purposes of necessitating investments in infrastructure uh, in Africa, both at a physical, at physical and, and ICT uh, policy. In terms of skills gap, we have coupled, we have, we have uh, together with other organizations such as the ITU, been, uh, you know, initiating a number of opportunities for mentoring, uh, for e-skilling our people in terms of uh, them understanding the opportunities that are available for innovation and, and online. And for in terms of uh, exposure and handholding, we have just established, uh, uh, you know, organized an Africa-wide uh, innovation challenge uh, dubbed ATU uh, Africa ICT Challenge, where we, we had, you know, 169 exhibitors, you know, uh, presenting their ideas to the judges and the eventual winner came from North Africa with a very innovative idea, realizing that because of COVID, you know, a lot of our schools have been closed, uh, yet there's uh, quite a bit of learning that is going on in our homes. So how can we ensure that the sort of a laboratory environment that we have in our schools uh, is, is, is available to students when they are learning from home? or that most of our schools do not have necessary laboratory facilities. And so we need to create an environment where, you know, our students can, can, can undertake experiments uh, online, virtually, and, and the facilities available. And so we've had an Africa-wide uh, competition in this regard. Uh, and, 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 and I was amazed at the level of skills that exist in this continent. And, and, and let me talk lastly at the level of institutions and capacity and institutions and handholding. I think there's, there's, as I've said, a lot of knowledge and skills in this continent. And what we need to work a lot more on, in my view, is hand, how we handhold, nurture, uh, you know, uh, op give nurturing opportunities for our young people so that they are exposed, they are e-skilled in order to ensure that their, their knowledge is, 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 is nurtured well enough from step, stage to step until they see uh, the market or are adopted by, you know, the big telcos for purposes of providing services to our people. And uh, there's never been an opportunity for cooperation that exists now, especially in innovation. And I speak this because of uh, what uh, His Excellency the Minister has just mentioned a while ago, and Madame from the UN, uh, the UN uh, in Benin. Uh, I, I think Africa has become a testing ground for so many ideas, and there are all sorts of institutions that are working in Africa, which is commendable. But I think we are worth working in our silos and piecemeal small organizations or institutions. And, and the impact that is created is not big enough to cause a change. And so I think there, there exists an enormous opportunity for us to work together, see the sort of institutions that we can create or work with for purposes of creating a bigger impact. Admittedly, uh, working in our small organizations or in our various uh, countries has created you know, the impact that is, is, is opportune is necessary at that level. But for us to create a big impact, for us to have a competitive edge with regard to other regions of the world, we need to work and cooperate a lot more so that, so that we create the necessary impact that, that, that is, is required to, in order to, 
create a bigger impact in this continent. I'm just impressed that, you know, uh, Congo Brazza has been, uh, you know, in the last couple of months or weeks, uh, been having a, 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 a competition on, you know, uh, for young people in terms of how their ideas can respond uh, to COVID-19. Uh, you know, parallel to that, we have been running uh, the same, the same sort of challenge. And so, my 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 idea is to see how we can maybe through ITU and and ITU has fortunately given us at the level of IT, ITU an opportunity to you know going forward work with the ITU so that we create a bigger a bigger a bigger a bigger thing, uh, work with each other, handhold each other, cooperate with each other, so that uh, people bringing their knowledge their skills, uh, we can then create a bigger impact. But for as long as we work in our little, little silos for that long, I think there's more of, uh, you know, competition rather than co cooperation. And I think we will create more impact when we cooperate with each other in this regard. And so I, uh, it's, it's my appeal. We have, uh, as I've mentioned, agreed with the ITU that going forward, we'll uh, organize the Africa Innovation Challenge together with the ITU. And we do invite, uh, you know, other organizations working in this space, working in Africa, that we work together so that the impact that we can create, you know, in, instead of duplicating resources that we don't have as Africans, we work together so that we create a larger impact in this regard. Over to you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. And yes, I um, <clears throat> let me in, in, in return acknowledge the, the work that ATU, the excellent work really, uh, that went, went into uh, the Africa Innovation Challenge, uh, which really put on the map what it is uh, Africans, African young people can do. This collaboration, uh, this again, co-creation, uh, the discussions that took place, the mentoring uh, that took place with these with these young people, because they, they do have ideas, but these need to be uh, to be molded. So uh, I, I very much appreciate that. I note uh, the challenges that you uh, you have mentioned, which are the same challenges that uh, that that I think the whole of Africa and industry have uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, really a susceptible in infrastructure uh, that in most places that are rural doesn't exist. Uh, the mentoring and this e-skilling uh, in addition to uh, hand-holding and giving young people an opportunity to, uh, to intern, uh, thereby giving them the opportunity, the opportunity to, to sharpen their, uh, their, their, their skills. But, Excellent. Let me let me turn to uh, Brian. Brian Sangundi, uh, Director of Innovation uh, for Orange, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, what is the role of partnership, of partnership and collaboration, this uh, in digitization of the informal sectors, of <laughs> empowering? are uh, used to be makers and creators to shape the world to accelerate and adopt digital uh, and close the gaps in the different sectors, whether it is health, whether it is education, agriculture. What are the most important challenges that uh, you are working to address today? Brian, please. You are muted. Hi, yes. Okay. Hello. Well, thank you very much. I'm very honored and um, pleased to be here with you all. Um, Honorable Minister Ibombo, um, Andrew, uh, Barbara, um, and John. Thank you very much for inviting me to, to participate in this dialogue. So, um, Orange is a, a, considers itself a key partner, um, you know, in in the in, in the region. Okay, uh, Orange has been uh, like our other uh, telcos, 
in Africa for around 20 years now. Um, we pride ourselves that one in every 10 Africans is an Orange customer. Um, we, we, we really were present in 18 countries um, and really we see our uh, future and Africa's future intertwined, right? We are, are co-creators of our future. So I think that it's, it's really important to, to, to stick stock of how, um, how these things are so that uh, we, we, we come from a place that we have long -term, a long-term vested interest in the growth of, of Africa. Now you asked about um, partnerships um, and, and, and challenges, especially in light of, of what the development uh, looks like across the region. So I'll answer that in a couple of ways. So the telcos, of course, like Orange, we invest over a billion dollars just in infrastructure, a billion euro every year across the region, across Africa, right? Across Africa and the Middle East. Now, this, this investment is only part of the story. The fact is um, uh, Orange, for example, employs over 18,000 people in the region. So we see that these investments in, in, in infrastructure, uh, in skills, as I think uh, John was mentioning, um, are really, really key to, to the growth and development in the region. And, uh, and we form part and parcel of that. But these things are also done through institutions like yours, Andrew, John, uh, like the, the minister, um, um, and Barbara, what you, what you, what you represent. We also have to have key engagements with the institutions to create the regulatory framework, the fiscal framework that would allow um, such investment um, in infrastructure and in skills, uh, in other things to continue um, and to have the impact, the desired impact um, that it is to have. Um, and the fact is given opportunities, given need, I think as Barbara had mentioned that um, when there is necessity, there is invention. Um, I think uh, when it came to, I think, accessing healthcare um, uh, uh, materials, given need, the invention is there. Um, I think that mobile money was uh, sort of a reinvention of cash, and this was done in Africa 20 years ago. So uh, there are no doubts uh, that when, when, when things are necessary, they can be, they can be built. So it's, it's a matter of aligning these things to make sure that they can become manifest. Um, so I think that the partners that we seek are uh, entrepreneurs, innovators, people who either have an idea and want to marry that to a problem or see a challenge and want to turn that around to an opportunity uh, and make things happen. And there's many things happening uh, across various sectors where there is actually extreme need. Um, agriculture is a big one. I think most working age Africans uh, are involved in agri in one way or the other. So that's a big one. Healthcare is a major, major um, issue facing the whole world, not just Africa. Um, but of course, we have to focus on some of the local challenges. Um, education has been very traditional for a very long time. And I think that we are seeing models around the world that are emerging that are sort of reinventing um, education and learning, uh, which I see as a lifelong process, frankly, to upskill yourself um, as the world changes. Um, and also even basics like transportation. Um, those are also things that we can do anew, right? Uh, we talk about the fourth industrial revolution. Um, to some degree, it means we can leapfrog some of the uh, sort of traditional ways to develop and actually uh, use digital as a platform to actually have an industrial revolution that's rather rapid and has the right impact on our environment and, and so on. So those are the kinds of um, uh, partners that we see, people who can manifest uh, such solutions. And of course, the challenges we face are many, okay? We have uh, for, for Orange, for example, we have to uh, get ready to sort of embrace uh, diversifying uh, revenues where we do our business. Voice, voice, um, uh, voice calls are changing around the world. Uh, many things are different. So you have to be able to adapt uh, to these things. And that's where we, we actually want to most empower um, some of our uh, youth in the region, talented youth in the region, 
um, to really drive these new solutions that would meet new challenges and, of course, um, uh, capture new opportunities um, for growth in the region. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Brian. Uh, I, I know, I know that uh, uh, Orange has uh, has had a history of uh, of supporting innovation, and I, I do appreciate uh, the the uh, work that uh, that you are doing in the, in the joint region of Africa and, and Middle East, and certainly substantial substantial investment. Uh, and I'm sure you have, uh, as you mentioned, plans to channel, to channel some of that to the young people uh, to be able to innovate around, uh, around uh, even the diversification of revenue, uh, revenue sources that you mentioned uh, and uh, the, the new emerging, uh, emerging areas that we can leapfrog to. Uh, certainly, I have no doubt that uh, by, by the time that uh, driverless cars are, are fully operational in, uh, in the develop, developed countries, we'll also have our own. So uh, I think you, you'll be a driver to some of that. So thank you very much. You, you, you did mention uh, the need for uh, a policy and regulatory framework. That is an area that ITU works in, so <clears throat> we will we'll probably um, be happy to, to work with you to see uh, where and what needs to be done in this environment. I know that we are, we are starting to tackle uh, the, the, the policy and regulatory uh, framework for 5G, for example, and uh, your, your role there would be much appreciated. <clears throat> so, in the in the short time that we we do have, and we 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 have barely uh, or, or fifteen minutes, I want to go back to to uh, His Excellency uh, Ibomo, Minister. I know that you 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 work with other uh, uh, ministers in the region, as as you have. You have mentioned you are aware of uh, the challenges not only in your in your country uh, but maybe in the neighboring countries. So uh, what I wanted to, to to ask of you is to share uh, what are the key challenges and opportunities that countries in in Africa or in the in the area uh, are facing, particularly during this public health crisis that that we've been talking about, and which national policies uh, do you think are key? There's only a short time, so you can, you can only uh, summarize, uh, but it would be important, I think, to know uh, or, or, or what you are sharing with other countries that needs to be done. Honorable Minister. Merci beaucoup, euh, mon cher ami. Qu'est-ce que, bon, les défis, hein, pour essayer de répondre un peu euh, de manière, euh, on va dire, globale et synthétique. Le premier défi, c'est d'avoir la connectivité. Hein, la connectivité, c'est un défi, un défi important. Et pour le cas du Congo, par exemple, au niveau de la connectivité, nous avons opérationnalisé le fonds d'accès pour le service universel des communications électroniques, justement, qui nous permet de pouvoir... Euh, euh, interconnecter les zones blanches, les zones qui ne sont pas couvertes, parce que à travers le numérique, on doit aussi assurer l'inclusion financière, parce que bon, aujourd'hui, on a un fort taux de pénétration de la téléphonie mobile, mobile, mais on a encore euh, un pan de la population qui est exclu au niveau du commerce et même au niveau des transactions financières. Les défis, on peut euh, dire encore un autre défi, c'est bon, on, on le dit souvent, peut-être trop. C'est le prix de l'accès à Internet. On dit que, parce que pour les innovateurs, évidemment, il faut qu'ils aient un prix d'accès à Internet assez, assez favorable pour leur permettre de pouvoir euh, euh, entreprendre euh, dans, dans, dans le secteur. Euh, le, le défi, c'est justement de pouvoir, pour le cas du Congo encore, 
de pouvoir pour booster le secteur euh, et surtout les innovateurs. On venait d'organiser chez Abrazaville récemment euh, une conférence de loi API euh, pour la protection euh, euh, des œuvres intellectuelles au niveau de l'Afrique. L'autre défi, c'est que nous puissions, pour le cas de notre département, euh, porter au niveau, du, au niveau du Parlement un projet de loi portant statut des start-up, afin que euh, l'on puisse euh, avoir une certification pour les start-up, parce que les innovateurs, les problèmes qu'ils ont, euh, c'est qu'au bout d'une de, année, de deux ans souvent, euh, ben, les projets, euh, euh, par manque d'accompagnement, on va dire, euh, au niveau institutionnel, c'est-à-dire qu'ils demandent à ce qu'ils qu puissent avoir euh, quand même des, euh, des on, 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 on va dire au niveau des appuis au niveau du gouvernement, au niveau de la douane, au niveau du ministère en charge, en, en, en charge des finances, au niveau des impôts, des taxes. Et euh, on a, on a lancement, récemment lancé euh, le FIGA dans notre pays. Et il y a eu un partenariat entre la Banque Postale du Congo et, et ce fonds. Mais le problème, c'est l'accès à ces crédits. Et tant que les start ne sont pas labellisés, ne sont pas certifiés euh, à travers euh, une reconnaissance, on va dire, euh, légale, gouvernementale, eh bien, pour l'accès au crédit, ça va être très difficile. Au niveau de la sous-région, euh, le challenge que nous avons, nous sommes en train de le combler, on, a, on en a parlé, c'est le, dans le cas du projet Central African Backbone, euh, dans le cas des points d'accès à Internet, euh, dans le cas du projet Central African Backbone, nous avons finalisé déjà l'interconnexion avec le Gabon. Euh, nous avons une interconnexion avec la République démocratique du Congo, mais ce n'est pas une grande capacité. Et là, nous sommes en train de finaliser les travaux de l'interconnexion avec le Cameroun. Les travaux, nous les avons déjà lancés. Et euh, nous allons lancer très récemment et très prochainement plutôt l'interconnexion avec la République centrafricaine. Donc, euh, ce sont euh, d'être, euh, de disponibiliser euh, une connectivité Internet abondante et à des prix euh, qui soient abordables aussi. Euh, ben, D'autres défis, euh, pour le cas du Congo, on a déjà ratifié la Convention des Nations de l'Union africaine sur la cybersécurité. Nous sommes en train de travailler pour que nous puissions avoir, dans le cadre d'un partenariat plus global, mondial, de, euh, de, de travailler sur, pour la ratifier la, la Convention de Budapest, de l'Union européenne. Euh, les défis, aujourd'hui au Congo, on a déjà une législation qui encadre le secteur, qui protège aussi bien nos systèmes d'information que, nos, euh, que, nos, euh, les, que les libertés individuelles. Euh, L'autre défi, c'est surtout de pousser à l'innovation. Nous sommes en train de travailler avec le programme des Nations Unies euh, au Congo, le PNUD. Euh, nous sommes en train de lancer, il y a 40 jeunes qui ont été retenus qui est pour euh, euh, présenter des, justement des, des applications dans le cadre de la lutte contre la pandémie de la COVID-19. Et nous pensons qu'à la suite de cette émulation, ça va encore favoriser euh, le dynamisme de notre secteur ben, Aujourd'hui, de plus en plus, euh, on va utiliser les visioconférences, on va utiliser le télétravail, la, euh, la télééducation, la e-santé. Donc, euh, il nous faut avoir des infrastructures robustes. Ah ben oui, parce que sans infrastructures robustes, c'est très difficile et accessible pour que les jeunes puissent venir euh, à travers ces autoroutes en nous proposant des applications, des logiciels qui feront qu'on puisse booster le secteur. J'espère que j'ai... J'ai répondu. Les défis sont encore nombreux. C'est ça, on a besoin d'accompagnement. Mais euh, le, le, le plus grand défi, on va dire, c'est euh, couvrir les zones qui ne sont pas couvertes pour assurer cette inclusion, la connectivité, l'accès à cette, à cette infrastructure, c'est-à-dire la connectivité, mais aussi l'interconnexion avec euh, les autres localités. Nous travaillons dans le cadre de Smart Africa. Euh, au Congo, par exemple, on peut dire que depuis Thank le you, premier janvier. Ah, depuis le 1er janvier 2020, le free roaming est opérationnel entre le Congo et le Gabon. Donc, on n'a plus besoin, je crois que M. Massima doit être content, il doit nous suivre. On n'a plus besoin de changer de bus. Et nous allons l'étendre d'ici la fin de l'année aux autres pays de la, de la, de la, de la sous-région. Voilà. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. This, it, it, we, we, we've almost taken all our time, but it was worth it because the, the issues that you've mentioned of cross-connectivity affect, uh, it, uh, it affects uh, affordability as well. Uh, the issues of uh, government incentives and registration of, uh, of uh, uh, these, these uh, uh, startups, all that is, is really important. I want to give like 30 seconds to, uh, to, to, uh, to each one of you to give me a line for tweet. One. Uh, Ch Ch uh, Andrew, before I give you a line for tweet, and this will be my tweet. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm speaking, uh, uh, this panel comprises uh, the policymaker, honorable minister, the operator, that's Orange, two UN organizations and one regional organization. Is it possible? Because I think the key issue that we need to come up with is how we can, pool, we can pool our resources together as institutions, as countries, in order to avoid duplication. I don't know right. how I can say this enough, but there is increasingly for me being, seeing a sense of more competition rather than cooperation. And, 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 and the challenge, I know Honorable Minister has spoken quite a number of them, but the challenge that I see in Africa, whether in Braza, whether in Nairobi, whether in Addis, is the hopelessness of our youth. And until the policymaker, the UN body, the government, the regional body, the operator, work together to develop solutions that would give hope to our youth, in terms of their innovative ideas, we will not have a future. Let's work so together. Your tweet, Thank you very much. Your I have tweet, given it to you, Andrew. But your tweet, tweet is, how do we pull resources to avoid duplication? You got it. You got it, Andrew. Barbara, what's your tweet? Andrew, uh, I, I actually have four very little tweets. The, the first one is, we can't go back. So we, we made amazing experience with the COVID, but we have problems ahead. We learned how to work together and we have to continue and shape this partnership. My first tweet. The second tweet is we absolutely need technical expertise to support the local ecosystems and ensure that young people present bankable solutions. Third tweet is we need spaces where we can hack talents to solve our problems because I saw, see problems on NLPs, for example, in Berlin. We don't find the right talents, but we know they are around. So we need those spaces where we can hack talents. And for us last week, we need to make sure that we have enough girls in our local innovation ecosystems. Sorry, for two uh, Sorry, I, I didn't hear the last one. The last one is Andrew, to ensure that we have girls yeah, enough ladies, in uh, the local ecosystems, IT-centered yes. ecosystem, because we are shaping our new future and our leaders of tomorrow. We need more and more and more girls there. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And I'm with you 100%. And I remember the tweet on top. Thank you. It's for tweets. What's your tweet? So I can go next. So um, thank you all very much. It was great speaking. Um, and my tweet is to say that innovation is ideation plus commercialization plus inclusion. It's uh, a little bit of saying what uh, I think the minister, John and Barbara said, um, just that we need to be more inclusive, more thoughtful around all the stakeholders, the environment, uh, gender based issues, the youth, as John was saying, and what the minister was saying, which is a wider empowerment of society. So that's my tweet, innovation equal ideation, commercialization plus inclusion. And I put it in the comment, by the way. Thank you, thank you. Honorable minister, what's your tweet? Mon, 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 mon tweet, c'est que je, je voudrais remercier euh, le, le directeur régional de l'Union internationale des télécommunications pour cette initiative. Je pense que nous en, a, nous en avons besoin et euh, nous avons aussi besoin, euh, dans le cadre de l'accompagnement justement des jeunes, 
euh, que l'UT nous accompagne pour que nous ayons des compétitions, euh, des, 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 des hackathons qui vont faire en sorte que les jeunes puissent s'insérer euh, davantage et surtout les jeunes filles dans le secteur. Voilà, mon truc. Excellent. Thank you. I, I, I think I shouldn't leave without, without my tweet. My tweet is that a digital innovation ecosystem will underpin efforts for our transformation beyond COVID-19. I thank all of you most sincerely for participating uh, in, in, in this session. I think we've set the pace uh, for, for all that are coming by uh, showing that uh, ideas from private sector, from government, from UN organizations, from international organizations can come together to shape the basis for uh, digital transformation and based also on uh, digital innovation ecosystems. I thank you and wish you a good afternoon.